Right, hello again. Uh, the next dish we're going to do uh, is a fish dish, and it's monkfish ceviche. Now, uh, ceviche is a Southern American uh, dish where you cook fish um, in lime juice. You can use the acid in the lime to actually cook the fish. Now, we're going to use monkfish today. Okay, this is monkfish, not any other type of monkfish, but it's monkfish cheek. Literally, it's the cheek from monkfish. A bit different, a bit unusual, but it does work. Now, you don't have to use monkfish cheeks. Uh, ceviche, you can use any fish that you want, pretty much, as long as it's spankingly fresh. That's the most important thing, fresh fish. Um, you, you really do want to use the best that you can get for this stuff. Um, all right, we're going to start. These are our cheeks. Okay. Now then, what we're going to do... If you are going to use monkfish, you will find on monkfish, unless you ask your fish monger to skin this for you, there's going to be a layer of skin on it, okay? A bit of a membrane. Now you've got to take that off because it's going to be a bit chewy, you might get stuck in your teeth, you don't want that at a dinner party or um, in the office trying to pick yourself out of your teeth after lunch. So a monkfish cheek, there you go. Now what you want to do is cut nice thin slices. If it's too thick, it's going to be a bit tough and it means the lime juice has got to work a little bit longer to, cook, to break that down, to tenderise the fish. So, let's move that out of the way. So again, any bits of sinew that are on there, ask your fishmonger to do this for you, it'll be more than happy, yeah? And if he's done a bad job, don't go back to your fishmonger, all right? So, sea bass is really great with this as well. Quite like it with sea bass, but monkfish. Monkfish tail is almost like steak and, you know, so is monkfish cheek. It's got a very meaty quality about it, so it, it lends itself quite well to this, uh, to this type of cooking method. So again, nice thin slices, about two or three mils thick. Okay, you can see how thin that is. I can bat that out on the back of my knife, nice and thin, yeah? Into a mixing bowl. This is an easy dish to do. It takes five, ten minutes at most. It's not that complicated. One lime, okay? Juice. Okay. Now all the juice have a lime in there. That's one. That's two. If you really like lime, you can get a bit of a zest in there, but we're not going to do that today. Mix that around. Next, we're going to add to that uh, a little bit of olive oil. Okay. Not a lot, just a splash. Just to coat it. Barely three or four tablespoons there to that amount of monkfish. Okay, olive oil, some pepper, just a twist, tiny pinch of sea salt, not a great deal, mix that through. Now, what I've done here is, like I said, the acid in that lime juice is starting to work on that monkfish, okay? So, by the time we get back to it, it'll have cooked it and it'll be ready to serve. Oops. So we're going to add to that the rest of the garnish. So at the moment we've just got monkfish cheeks. Now what we're going to use is avocado pear, okay? And you can get these anywhere. Everyone knows what an avocado pear is. Easily done. Split your avocado around the back of your knife, twist him, stone. Glad that came out in one. Out. Okay. Now avocado pear does go brown, so that's why this dish is best done sort of in the morning before you go off, not the night before, okay? And normally you get a really fresh avocado pear, it should fall right out of the skin. This one's being a little bit difficult. If your avocado is too ripe, it's going to be mushy. If your avocado is like a hand grenade, forget it. No flavour, tough as old boots. You want it just not too soft and not too hard. If it's too soft, great for guacamole. If it's too hard, it's great for you throwing through someone's window. Okay? Not nice. So, an avocado in half. I'm just going to put a bit of lemon juice on this as a precaution so it doesn't go brown. Okay, you don't have to do this. But if you did do this the night before, if you did, get some lemon juice on there and that's going to stop these guys from going brown. Okay, a bit of lemon juice. I cut it up nice and chunky, you don't want it too fine. Some slices there, in half, into the mixing bowl. Toss that through. Okay. Don't be too aggressive, just lightly mix those ingredients up. To that we're going to add a red onion. Now, you don't have to use red onion, you can use a white onion, you can use a Spanish onion. I like red onion, I find the flavour a little bit more palatable 
to go with this. Now, you want to get this cut as thinly as possible. Again, you can use a mandolin. Um, as thin as you can get it. Reason being, you don't want really harsh pieces of onion to chew on. If you cut it really, really thinly, when it goes into the marinade, that lime juice, again, is going to start to cook the onion. The onion becomes a little bit softer. Okay? So, one onion, one avocado. I'm only going to use half of this. And approximately, that was two, maybe 100 grams of monkfish there. Okay? So, one onion, finely sliced. As thin as you can get it. Okay, that's fairly thin there. You can use a mandolin at home, all right, to get that nice and thin. And mix that around in your salad there, okay? Let's get the rest of that onion in there. Get this in the bin. Next, tomato. You can use cherry tomatoes. I did try to get some cherry tomatoes today, but I couldn't get any, so I'm going to use a good old plum tomato. You can get cherry tomatoes anywhere, Tesco's do them. They also do some great varieties at the moment. You've got yellow ones, green ones, orange ones. So be a bit adventurous with your tomatoes. If you can't find any, you can use plum tomato or beef tomato. Into strips. About the same thickness as the avocado was, okay? Thin strips. Just put the flesh in. Don't want to get the seeds in there. There we go. So, red onion, avocado, uh, tomato, monkfish, lime juice, salt, pepper, olive oil. That's what we've got in there at the moment. Okay. Pinch of chives. Pinch of fat leaf parsley. Don't have to use fat leaf parsley. You could use some coriander. That would probably go really well with this dish. In fact, I'm going to take a little bit more olive oil. I'm going to squeeze a little bit more lemon juice in there, half a lemon. There we go. And now we're just going to plate it up. Now this stuff will sit in your lunchbox quite happily. If you make it in the morning before you go to work, great when you come to use it. Okay, so now I need a spoon. And I haven't got one. My trusty assistant, assistant even, is going to find me a spoon. And Keith thought you had one of these. Clive, I think his name was. Here there. And the camera around there. So, here we go. Here's our monkfish tea. Very colourful dish. Nice summertime. This make a great start in the evening on a bar, you know, barbecue in the summer with some friends. It's so easy to do. There's like six ingredients to this. Avocado, monkfish, red onion, lime juice, tomatoes, some olive oil, a little bit of pepper. I mean, it's, it's easy. It really is easy. If you're a bit frightened about eating raw monkfish, because we haven't actually cooked it, you know, you cook it off first, not too long in an oven, and then slice the monkfish, and then just put some lime juice over it if you're a bit scared by, you know, eating raw fish, especially if you've got elderly, pregnant, you know, young kids, you might not want to go down this road, you know, it's the same kind of thing as sushi, um, but like I say, cook it off in the oven first, let it cool down, slice it as thin as you can get it, like, a, you know, monkfish carpaccio, and then go in with your olive oil, sorry, your lime juice. Okay. So, there's that. Using a lot of oil, but it's okay, it's good for you. It's nice and healthy. Bit of oil to finish. One last flourish of pepper over the top. One last little pinch of mold and salt. And I love salad, as you can tell. I was all doing my last dish. A little bit of salad. Okay. Sit that on top, and there we go. That's monkfish ceviche. Easy, happy days.